What's up, guys? Welcome back to Modern Craftsman Monday. Monday with my beautiful gaffieri voice. <laughs> <laughs> we got John back on this week. For better or worse. John, welcome. I, I literally thought you weren't going to say anything. I was like, yeah. I can't just tee you up and you're, you're, just, you're just not going to say anything. Yeah, the, this podcast, we realized that John's, what he brings to the table first and foremost is his good looks. We do yeah. talk about That's that. That's why it's a podcast. And then his work mm-hmm. ethic and drive. Mm-hmm. Number two and number three. And then budget yeah. schedule, I think we're four and five. Uh, ah, yeah. probably bottom of the list. The list goes really? like 11. The list. 11, <laughs> jeez. Well, this week Damn. we don't have a guest. It's just the three of us. Uh, we had a little time zone mishap, so we'll be rescheduling him for a, another episode. But we dig into uh, an important topic about comparing on social media. Um, I think we started this podcast with the mindset that we weren't social media experts, but this is something that has come up in multiple conversations throughout previous guests. And Mike from Greenside mentioned it the other day about how it's easy to get trapped in the mindset of comparing yourself to what others are doing and how successful they might be. And you in particular or yourself individually um, may feel as though that you're struggling to keep up. Don't do it. Stupid. I just saw Tyler's, <laughs> Tyler's story. <laughs> <laughs> Don't compare. It's not a good awesome. idea. It is important. I think and it's something that, uh, you know, social is going to stick around. We all have young kids now and ensuring that they, they understand the potential pitfalls of seeing utterly perfect human beings thrown in your face every single day. We might get out of this alive. This podcast is brought to you by Duration Molding and Millworks. So listen to this. The folks at Duration are doing something unheard of in this economy. Thanks to increased production volume and production efficiencies, they're actually lowering the price of their beveled sidings. Who does that? Yep. With other products taking multiple price increases and having availability issues, you'll experience none of that with duration. And more importantly, you'll be using the best looking and highest performing beveled siding out there on your build. To learn more about Duration Polyash products, please visit their website at durationmillwork.com. That's kind of crazy, though. Everyone else prices skyrocketing in durations like, yo, <laughs> lowering the prices. Oh. And our turnaround's quicker now. Crazy. Damn. Oh, yeah. Let me pull that up. Hold on. So yesterday, we received a text message from Mike Connolly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, big Mike. Greenside Design Build. Is that the company name? Yeah. Sorry, Mike. So I didn't have Mike's phone number saved, which is pretty much par for the course with me. I'm not very good at returning phone calls, text messages, DMs. And we get this very long text message um, from Mike that I then go into a separate text with Nick and John and say, who the hell is this? (laughs) Um, And then I find out that it's Mike. So maybe I should, you think he's fine with me just reading the text now? I'm te- oh. I'm texting him right now. See if he's around. Yeah. Um. I mean, yeah. I guess that we could go back and filter his name out if he doesn't want to know. But uh, let me let me um summarize it. So basically, he had some free time, and typically when you have free time, you start thinking about things that you don't usually do during the work week your mind starts to wander and he started to kind of compare himself to what other people are doing on Instagram and uh, what people are building. And it seems like there's so many heavy hitters. that are so successful right now. and Every job's amazing and they're making so much money and new trucks and marketing and the best jobs and the best designs. And he starts looking inward. What am I doing wrong? Um, but he even said it was, you know, he even compared against us and we're friends and he's like, yeah, he just got caught up in it. Yeah. So, you know, he had some downtime and he, he's scrolling Instagram and he's looking at what everyone else is doing and then asking himself, why am I not there? Why am I not landing those type of jobs? Is it, is it because of my market? Is it because of social media? And then 
he kind of realized that there's this entire, um, I guess with, within social media, uh, you're always comparing yourself to somebody else and you're always looking at what you're doing. And then this, this false depiction of what people's lives and businesses are like, and it can really rob you of a lot of joy or what you are experiencing in your own life. And then I think Nick or John ended up finding a link yeah. or an article basically on that exact topic where I didn't dig into that article at all, John. I don't know if you did, but basically how much, um, like Mike said, how much of an emotional trap Instagram and social media can be because you're just looking at the best of the best of everything and nobody's putting out the, sh they are to some extent, but nobody's posting their crappy projects. Nobody's posting their, you know, when they have a bad month financially, um, they're just posting, Hey, this is how amazing things are. Everyone's busy. Everyone has the best jobs and it can really, you can start getting down on yourself. Um, what was that article about John? Oh, I just read the subject line. That was it. Per the subject oh, line. I, I <laughs> definitely thought he said per the subject line. Like, listen, but you were, did you say I only read the set? Su yeah. Line? Was it? Yeah. Oh, That's um, you guys, but I, I thought that it was, it was a good topic to dig into personal level, business level that um, <clears throat> it's, it's not always the healthiest thing to compare what you're doing, what your life looks like to what you see on social media or to anyone else in general. Um, I think that it's human nature to kind of look at what other people doing and say, hey, why am I not there? Why why don't I catch this break? How come they get this job? How come their wife looks like this? How come their kids are succeeding in this sport? Um, <clears throat> how come they got this start or I didn't have that start? Or my life's all difficult and my problems seem to be the only problems um, that exist and everyone else seems to have this smooth path. And I don't think it's it's not the healthiest thing to do. Um, you guys compare yourselves to other people a lot or try not to. I think I uh, did for a long time and, and I, I, I certainly still do. And I certainly yeah. like when Mike said that yesterday, I'm like, damn dude, like I watched the stuff you build and I'm like, why am I not building that? Seriously? Yeah. And it's, you know, it's, and I, I know I keep talking about this whole, like focusing on like opportunity and not problems thing that I read I, and I think about this as it attributes to like influence and, and what other people are doing. And it's, you know, and that goes for like, John, you said, you know, you, you just said it, even like friends, it's like, I look at you, John, what you're doing and Tyler, what you're doing. And like, there's days where I'm like, those guys got to figure it out. And I'm sure there's days where each of you feel the same way about, you know, all, like each other. But I do think that more, more recently, I have, I've had a better attitude about, I'm just going to stick to what I truly believe in and just keep going, moving in a forward direction. And I'm going to probably screw a lot of shit up, but I'm just going to keep working towards what I think is right. I think, yeah, uh, so I, go ahead. go ahead, John. I was going to say, I, I, I've been, maybe it's lucky or just, I'm stupid and I'm naive and don't see it, but I use social in the beginning so often to look at like, Jason and Brad and and Sheffy and these groups of small boutique companies that echoed the same thing that I wanted to create. So it gave me confidence. Unlike it's, it's not robbing from me, but I was like, every time I, I felt like I needed to grow faster, I, again, comparing myself at Nick with Nick at the time, I was like, oh, I get why he grabbed these certain people and, and did this. And at the same time, I'm like, I needed that kind of I don't, I want to say sounding board with those guys to be like, all right, I can stay lean. That is okay. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, I, I, maybe I was oblivious, but yeah, there's certain days where if you're having a bad day or everything's heavy, maybe social doesn't lift you up. It's like, mm -hmm. God, it's always clean. You know, yeah. whatever they're doing is like, you look at the Fox group and it's like, have they ever had a bad day in their entire life? And like, but they post a picture for the holiday and it was like six horses, a pony two dogs sitting completely perfect. And it was like, yeah. what? Like, do I need that? I couldn't it's, like it. It's such a, it's such a mind fuck too, because you know that it's fake. You know, that so much of it's all curated content. It's not, you know, I'm going to fill my daily routine and just, 
put it out there exactly as it is. There's filters. You're selecting what you're posting. You're trying, you know, there's people who are trying to be as transparent as possible. And there's other people who are just looking to kind of generate this, this, um, entire, um, like cultivate this lifestyle or what they want their life to be, or this, this entire illusion of what their life is like. Um, It's it's a false (laughs) sense of popularity. We've talked about. Yeah. But you, you go into it and you know that, like, I know that I understand that. And then I'll be watching videos of somebody riding a dirt bike or skateboarding. And it's like, damn, they nail every trick. (laughs) And I know, like, I know that it's fake, you know, that they're not posting their faults because they will. Oh, they'll post bloopers. But you're like, oh my God, how do they nail that first time every time? Like, they're so good. Everything that they land is crazy. Mm. And it's like, yo, they're probably only posting one tenth of it. Right. Hey, like I posted this, I probably tried this 900 times before I got this clip of it. And you know that going in, but your mind for some reason, like doesn't believe it. It's, um, it's funny. I'm thinking of something specific, but it's like, I, what you just said, Tyler, is that, you know, that they did that trick a dozen times, a hundred times, whatever it is. Yeah. But when you're watching it, there's no evidence of it. But I think yeah. of, you know, you know, Ken Block, the rally car driver. Mm-hmm. He No, I don't know him. There was like he's done this like viral video called Jim Kana where he basically drives like a car through a city, drifting around the city, drifting like th- underneath things and like on the edge of yeah. a pier and just like absolutely crazy driving skills. But when you watch the video, it's completely smooth. It's all one shot. But what's interesting about that video is that he's driving and on the course there's literally hundreds of tire marks and skid marks and 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 yeah. and, and drifting marks and when you watch that it's you for whatever reason i watch it and i can like there's evidence that this isn't the first time and yeah. it's almost appreciated more because you're seeing the evidence and seeing how how hard he's tried to to get this shot completed where it's like the, the the flip side is like TV and these videos that we watch or the the stuff we see on social media. It's like, no, this is the filtered version. Here's like, here's the best one out of the the six photos I took. Here's the 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 best, you know, shot of my siding where you didn't see that I had two cedar shingles line up. You know, it's like yeah. we, we, we filter through, you know, our own eyes and then and then you know, and furthermore, when we, when we share it with the public. I I think that that's fine as well. That that's, that's all fine and good. If you as an audience are comfortable with yourself and confidence and confident in yourself and have self-esteem because you can see that and you can use that as motivation to get there. Right. Even if you understand that it's not real, be like, Hey, I want to be able to get there. I want to be able to do that. The problem is, especially with, you know, we look towards our kids and everything else or younger men and women getting into this where you see that and it's just, it's pounding down on top of you because it just seems as if, you know, this struggle in front of you to gain the knowledge and the expertise and the um, experience is so huge. It's so insurmountable. And then you open up Instagram and see somebody effortlessly doing something that you've struggled with for how long. And it kind of, it pushes you down even further. It's a slap in the face. Yeah. And it's, and you're absolutely right. It's not, there's nothing wrong with showcasing your best work. It's like social media didn't make that happen. Social media just made it easier to, to see it. You know, it's like before that it was magazines. It's like you weren't putting your, your okay work or your, your crappy work in a magazine, you were putting your best work. And it was the same thing. People will flip through a magazine like, man, they got their stuff together. It's like, I could never put a project in this magazine because I'm not there yet. And, you know. Yeah, it's like a highlight reel where you see, you see 10 amazing plays and you could be a mediocre player right. or athlete the rest of the time. And you had 10 amazing plays where take that out of context and only see that. And you're like, this is the best baseball player that's ever lived. Mm -hmm. Um, And then it's just by chance, you know, on 10 separate occasions, they did 10 phenomenal things that were above average. And for the rest of their career, they're average. 
but it really, it ends up being in the context. I know there's a specific video that was, it, I laughed because you see it was a guy doing like an enduro course on a dirt bike and he comes up, jumps over a rock, turns his bike in midair and like wheelies over a log all in one fluid motion. And I saw it on like somebody reposted it and I was like, oh my God, that's so crazy because you're like, yeah, somebody just happened to be there with a camera. And then you go onto the guy's page and he's like, what it looks like in Instagram versus what it was in reality. And he posts like his other attempts at doing that same thing. And the way that it was shot, it looked like he was on a race course and he's coming around. It just so happens somebody's at that turn and he just nails this crazy trick. And then like the actual picture based, like the one of his other attempts shows him launching up into the air, like snubbing his front tire on the log, flipping over the handlebars and going through trees. And like, that's the reality of it, that that's going to be nine times out of 10, what's going to happen. And then you do catch on film that happening once and like, oh, so he does that every time. Right. And you know, it's not that, you know, that's not the case. But that's just kind of how it presents itself. It's in, it's in life. I mean, I remember I've watched Kevin Hart, like, not make it on these comedian shows, like, and then now he's one yeah. of the biggest stars in the world. But you look back and you're like, that took ten years. Right. And yeah. you look at like some country music people that they've you know start like you've heard their song and then they don't make it big for another fifteen years, and it's it's reality. It's there's that that comment that I said before. It, it takes you know, 10 years to be an overnight success. And it's because people don't it's see true. all those years. Which I, I think that's something I can appreciate now that I'm a little further along in that path. But I know, you know, I do fear for my kids growing up where I think at, at a young age or even when you start something, you're not certain of yourself or you don't have the self-esteem, the self-confidence that you're going to get through it that it's going to get easier, that you're going to, you're going to sort out what those, those issues are. Seeing that stuff could be really difficult um, and could actually bring you down. And I don't, I don't think it's, it's not the healthiest thing in the world to compare yourself to other people or compare yourself to a standard that's unattainable to 99% of people. I mean, that's why um, they got rid of likes, right? Yeah. Yeah. They get rid of like buttons and then there's so many filters beyond what we do for our business and our lives. Like I, like I said, we texted back and forth and I was like, I, I don't keep a real strict eye on my oldest. My youngest doesn't have social, but my, my oldest does. And, and dude, they're never on it. They're on, they're, they're absorbing like TikTok useless videos, but I've watched, like I'll go through every once in a while and just see who's following him or vice versa make sure there's no scumbags. And, um, even though they'll probably do a better job of hiding it than what I'm going to say. Um, and I've, I've noticed that all these kids, A, you want to make sure they're all private. And then B, almost all the kids from his grade that he follows, and they've deleted almost every photo they posted within the last two years. And it, yeah. there's nothing there. And it's kind of funny to see how it kind of picked up in the beginning, maybe two years ago. And now they, they're they taking in the content, but they're not. They're consuming it. it. Yeah. Yeah. As long as they're consuming decent content, I'm fine with that. I mean, we even the other night caught the girls. They'll be on YouTube and <clears throat> it's not anything bad, but it's we just like, why are you watching that? There's other things that you can be doing that you can be spending your time doing where that's not where we want your your brain space to be going mm. like there's so many better. Th and we didn't have that when we were younger. You know, it, the school is getting let out now. And my daughter comes, she gets off the bus crying that school's over because she's not going to see her friend. She's not going to be her te see her teacher. And I'm, I turned to her, I'm like, I don't know whose daughter you are because the day that school let out from the time I was six until the time I was 18, there right. was no better <laughs> feeling in the world. I right. was like, yes, no more school. I get to get on my bicycle for the next three months and not be home until it's dark. Yep. And it, it's different for them now. They do live <clears throat> in a different world than we do. And I just, I want to ensure that I don't, I don't think it's super healthy to compare yourself to others. I think that you can, you can measure yourself against somebody else 
or chase somebody that's ahead of you to better yourself, right? So if you're if you're racing people and you're the fastest racer, you're never going to get faster than that. The only way that you're going to get faster is if you've raced with people who are faster than you, who are better than you. You have to surround yourself with those people. And I think that doing that elevates you. It elevates everyone else. And that's a good thing um, to kind of measure yourself against that in order to move ahead um, or grow. But I think that measuring yourself just to see your self-worth or how you stack up against somebody else just for the sake of doing so or to see that they're doing better than you or they have more money than you or they have cooler projects than you it's not healthy and i also it's not fair to anyone um like i texted you guys no matter what way you cut it <clears throat> there's no proper way to compare yourself to somebody else because everything in your life has led up to today where you are and who you are because of a sequence of events that's completely unique to you and not a single other person in the world. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, you know, for me to compare myself to somebody who's the same scale as my business and does the same type of work, while it may seem convenient, is not an accurate comparison, no matter what way you cut it, because they have a different wife, they have a different family, they have a different financial capacity, their parents left them more money, didn't leave them more money, are still alive. It, everything's different. And comparing yourself to somebody else, it's just never apples to apples. It, and they also have a different filter. I mean, I think that's what, I think that's knowing how they make the cake is the biggest part. And I think that, correct if I'm wrong, but I think what, I know we, we posted great things when we were, you know, first starting out in social, but one of the things that, that did draw a crowd or, people to our accounts is that we were genuine and people yeah. saw that and that we didn't hide it. And, and if things didn't go right on our, like when stories came out, it was the best thing because we were showing the behind the scenes of the photos and yeah. And people, people want that popularity and they don't ever want to give in and show, you know, the nitty gritty or the behind the scenes. They always want it to be, you know, cupcake and rainbows. But I think the reality is, is it is, is your filter. And if you appreciate it, because you know what it takes to go into that in the days and the grind and all that stuff that we all got, you know, the Gary V potion. And now we're all like, we're over it. And there'll be another group of people that come along that, that hit that high and they need that high in their career to get them through that next five year milestone. I don't know what it is, but I guess maybe it's just me being old, but it, it's, you almost look at everything and go like when I watch a movie, Nick, and I see them driving through a field and you can see the tracks from a movie before, like the scene before it's like, Oh, they did this a few times. Like, mm, or through the yeah. sand, you're like, you couldn't have raked it first. Like you couldn't have lied to me. Like that's what I, but it's knowing it. But my son, my kids, I mean, my boys now they, they look at it. They like, like how, when they cut a scene and the guy's tie was like tucked into a shirt and then the next yeah. scene, it's not that my boys eat that up. So, I mean, I, I think it's also for us, you know, that article that was in the New York, the New Yorker, um, that was more targeted towards, you know, how it shapes our identity for the kids. Because, I mean, for me, the biggest thing isn't posting images and it being fake. It's what you post. The shit that I said and did when I was younger was never written down. Everything was verbal. You talk shit, it was on the ice, it was gone and it evaporated. You say something at school, it evaporates. Now, when you write stuff down and, and they have chat on their, on their video games and they have, you know, an IG post and you write something that you think sarcastic, but yet it, it, it's, it's hurtful. That yeah. lives forever. forever. Someone deletes it. They, they screenshot it. It's still there. It's someone captured it. That is the biggest lesson that I've had to approach with my oldest and my youngest for that matter. It's just, you know, knowing that, Hey, they, they tech. They text a lot in FaceTime. They're on group chats, my youngest. You know, that, hey, jump like they jump on Zoom. It's crazy. They jump on Zoom, their school computers, and then they'll play a game on their iPads while they're all talking to each other on Zoom. And it's it's like it's, it's instead of like hanging out and going out to like the yeah, getting penny candy, they're just sitting on the couch, vegging out, playing some mindless game, screaming at each other through the Zoom call. And it's <laughs> and, but then they can write in the chat. And so every once in a while, you got to go through the iPad and go, hey, what, what's everyone saying? And, and just because it is, 
I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many times it's happened in, in my kids' grades where someone says something that they don't even know what they're saying mm-hmm. and what they're implying, but yet one parent catches on and then it goes into this whole thing because they just don't know. And it's just, again, that's our job as a parent is to let them understand how the cake's made on social and that, you know, what it takes to go into it, what you're really seeing. And same goes for our businesses that I think we try and say the same thing to to younger people in this industry or people that are struggling is that, Hey, jump on a call. You know, we, the only reason why that we're, where we're at is because we've also hit those milestones and those struggles and hit them every day. We're just confident enough or dumb enough or naive enough to talk about it. It it's, I get that. I guess my my worry is prior to social media where you have TV and you have magazines and the internet <clears throat> and you needed, um, I mean, for, for example, a magazine, if you needed a, a model or you needed an actor or actress in a movie and you needed people photographing them, you needed editors, makeup people, all of this to create this perfect human who everyone's going to compare themselves to and look up to. And now that's so easy to do on social media with filters and with makeup. And now everyone can portray themselves as this, this beautiful 10 out of 10 person who's so talented and has a perfect life. And where does that leave the families and the kids who aren't a 10 out of 10 and who struggle and now you know, instead of being able to surround themselves or like I said in that text, identify with people in the same position as you or identify what makes you different, where you want to improve. Now you're just basically having perfection shoved down your throat on a daily basis. I think that's the toughest thing, especially with our youth, where you have those formative years. Let's be honest at 11, 12, 13, 14, you're awkward. Like girls are awkward. Boys are even more awkward. And now you have people who are two, three years ahead of them who are displaying themselves as these, these perfect people. And I think that it's going to be detrimental to the younger kids. I mean, if, if you look, we have a grown adult male who's falling into this emotional trap um on social media who is i mean he's over 40 years old right how do we expect our kids not to fall into that same trap no it's it's scary straight up that's that's a that's a tough one for me especially when i mean we're all we're all part of that um you know we're looking to put our best foot forward and convey the best work that we do and <clears throat> our team and our jobs and what we're doing, you know, to the highest level, but that's not necessarily indicative of what, what life is like. I know what I share on social from a work perspective, I like to be as accurate as possible. Um, but I don't always, I don't share all the headaches. I don't share all the time, employee turnover, the mistakes. Well, and it's just because I don't want to, I don't want to focus on all, all that negativity, Um, but I, it it could be, I guess you could get a peek into the daily, daily, daily operations of what we're doing. That's a little more accurate than, you know, just a finished photo of something. That's true though. I mean, you do manifest what you put out there. And I think if you're going to put negativity out there, I don't, I don't want to be met with it every which way, you know, it's more of, it's finding that fine line. Or you're like, it's a work in progress. I just remember, I think some of the best things I had, you know, years ago when I was posting stuff would be like, hey, we're going to pour concrete on Friday. And we, they were like still digging the hole. And then Friday would turn around. I'd be like, I, I use social as an accountability stick. Yeah. You know, where it's like, all right, I'm going to put like when I post my runs, I'm posting them not to brag. And I know it can come across like that, but it's more of like, no, like you fuckers are going to keep me accountable that I'm going to run two, three times a week. Otherwise, someone's going to go, hey. You know, in this kind of, I don't know, maybe I take it this way. It's like, hey, not running this week? And I'm like, oh, yeah. like, and that's probably not what they meant, but it's, it's, uh, 
I, that's, I really do. I, like we talk about like, was it um, never split the difference, high anchoring and low anchoring certain conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it where it's, I, I tell my guys that it's like, Hey, tell that client that, Hey, it's going to get measured on Monday for a carpet in the basement. It's Thursday. Cause guess what? Without you anchoring that spot, you're never going to call it in on Friday because no one's holding you accountable. And social media can do that with you guys. You know, we always go back and forth. It's like, yeah, I'm trying to do this. And, and, and it's tough. You, you, and I think we've all been at that, that coffee shop or that cookout where you tell a story, it's someone else one ups it. And the next person one ups that story until it gets to, it's a fake story. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, you're like, you know, maybe you just need to shut up. And that was the end of the, the one upping thing. And that's, I think that's just, in our world. But I, I think if we can look at it like, Hey, how do I do this? And then how do I keep myself accountable on this thing? It's, that's the beauty of it is, is not always people post all finished photos because they want to get that popularity higher, whatever the algorithm is. But it's, I've always loved, I love the industry. I love the nitty gritty. I love the inside out, the, the not like I just posted a picture the other day and it was like, I appreciate that. I want it to be my angle, my line of sight, what I appreciate that day at any given time. And if I'm not into it, then I'm not posting it. And that's the reality of it. Not because it's going to get, and I get, I, we all look back. Remember social media in the beginning? It's like, oh, dude, that didn't get a hundred likes in the first 10 minutes. And that's a good post. I think that should stay up. You know, <laughs> and it was like, and you, the amount of, I look back now and go, the amount of time I even thought about that, I regret it. It's like what, what? What was I? What, right. Like really? And and yeah, it does. It it's not that important at the end of the day. And whether somebody likes you, I think um, <clears throat> I look at it. My content and even what I'm putting out is I want it to be authentic. Um, and I I have trouble. One of the reasons I don't like taking photo where somebody gets me in front of the camera and says we're going to record this or I want to take a photo of you, or I need you to turn the camera on yourself and film it. It's not because I'm shy. It's because it feels inauthentic to me at that point, right? If, yep. if you guys say, Hey, we want to put a camera on you and walk around the job site and we don't need you to turn and face the camera and address an audience, I would be fine with it a hundred percent of the time where it's like, follow me around, whatever I'll be myself. But as soon as you tell me that I have to face the camera and I have to speak to an audience that's imaginary in my head, it's so difficult for me because it doesn't feel like me. Like I feel like it's forced and that's not who I am. And I'm worried about what I'm going to say. And at that point, it, there's nothing authentic about that. And I think that you can open up to that. You can loosen up to that. And you, be, you can become more and more yourself the more comfortable you are in front of a camera. But that's the hardest thing, even with stories and everything else. I don't want to sit there and film myself talking about my job because that's just nothing I would do. Like I, I would never, if there was no social media, I would never film myself talking about my job. Hmm. Like I don't want to film my face and talk to you. It's just, that's not me. So that's not what I put out. Um, but I think that a lot of people on social, it's not about being authentic. It's, it's about a popularity contest. It's about putting out content for engagement and for likes and <clears throat> for the wow factor. Um, and that's the type of stuff that I don't think is healthy for anyone to have kind of pumped into them on a daily basis. Yeah, but it's I mean, also, it's how you, I remember I used to do stories all the time and, and I remember I'd get the comments, uh, l less face, more project. And, and <laughs> I could have taken that and been like, what? I'll be like, you're absolutely right. Like, you're, and I would, I guess I'm, I, I look back at I, all these little moments and I laugh and I think that's what you have to do. And I think that's the right move is not to be like, well, what's wrong with this angle? It's my angle. And then get all bitter about it. I think it's more like, then I go around like, you know what? I, and then you'd watch videos and be like, dude, that's, that's more face than I need to see. And yeah. for, for anyone, <laughs> like not just my videos, but it's, I think it's, you're right. But it's also knowing, you know, again, how the cake's made. I remember we used to do the cuking videos like, Hey, Here's a line, say this line and record it. And then we're going to mash yeah. it all together. And I remember so talking hard. to you guys and be like, Hey, how many times did it take you? And then my phone would have like 45 attempts yeah. <laughs> and I'd be like, I appreciate what everyone goes through now yep. to try and make that one, like Kevin O'Connor, 
Like, how is he banging It just doesn't that feel intro? like you. It doesn't feel authentic. But it's like, but how it's do you make it forced. look authentic? So it's like, right? I'm going to keep recording it. But that's what like, Kevin's that's good me. at. Yeah. That's what Kevin's good at. It's like, I can film with Doug all day. But the moment he says, hey, do this line, it, he's he knows it's going to be a shit show. Yeah. Or even put somebody else in the room with you. Change that up where it's like somebody that you're not familiar with or not comfortable around. Right. And now it's a completely different, it's an all new ball game at that point. But it's, and John, I know you weren't in last week's episode, but Trent talked about this a little bit where it's like, he talked about woodworkers and YouTube and how social media has basically narrated who they are and what projects they're doing to based on like what can fit into a, a, a clip. It's like, they're not doing a more complex project. They're doing a lesser complex project so they can get a start, middle end, end all in one clip. Like the yeah, HGTV that, like, model. Yeah, exactly. It's like network TV. And it's, you know, and, and where, and he was specifically talking about like how he just captures his canoe building and one video will be him, him installing one piece of wood with glue and that's it. Cause that's all he did that day. And it's, you know, but my, my reference to that is that, you know, it's like we, we get into these habits of shaping what we do based on the reaction or based on what we're trying to get out of it or out of social media or well, how the platform will receive it. Not for, yeah, I, I, like, I, I mean, think you used to say like, Hey, you know, three minute videos are the way to go. And I'd be like, okay, right. like, the three minutes and then like you do it and then it's like now long content's the way to go and you're like what like i'm i feel like yeah, an i old changed man. my mind a lot <laughs> but no but it's i, mean, I remember it. trying to be like no, this is my it's, insight but it, it but it's true like you know and doug and i had a really serious conversation i think a week or two ago where i was just like dude like i just he wants to go back to doing more produced like creative stuff which i love and i want to i want to just stop ignore i want to completely ignore like YouTube metrics are so in depth and it's like one of those things that we, him and I both look at and I look at it out of pure curiosity and he's trying to like, you know, there's things that we are trying to do to, to manipulate, like basically watch time. And it's like, you can watch these, you know, um, I forget what they're called exit points. When, if I'm talking in a video and I said, all right, we're going to head over to our Cambridge project. That's an exit point. People will literally shut the video off right at that moment because I've given them a stopping point where it's like, it's better to not do that. It's better to just all of a sudden show up in another job. And they're like, wait, what the hell just happened? Because they ne you never lose the attention. But well, did, did my you see social social uh, dilemma? Uh, yeah, I did. Like that's they like that's the reason why you keep scrolling. Remember when right. social the was on the beginning? You'd, you'd hit the bottom and you'd be like, oh, I caught up. And then you'd get off. Right. And then I've watched it watching that movie was like, Oh my God, like there, yeah. there's so many things inf infinite scroll. Yeah. And they, they don't want to give you that disconnect moment right? that you, that you instantly take right. instinctively and, take. And it's, you know, so my point was that is I want to, I want to like, I've never ran. There was probably a small period in time on, on Instagram that I decided to try to manipulate it in my favor. And what I mean by that, like, like do things to, to, to try to grow my following. And it was, yeah, you post like I, three, day, three times a day. Yeah. yeah. Or like engage with people that I didn't really think want, like that weren't really my audience just to see if I could get them to, to engage back. It was just, it was this short time and it just, it, it, first off, it didn't really work. And second off, it wasn't what I wanted to do. I, I was like, no, I just, I actually just thoroughly enjoy posting one time a day sharing what we're doing and keeping people updated and stories have, were always fun for me. Like, because it was, I, I, there was a ton of engagement and I haven't done like my true stories and, and I feel like months and it was Same. last Friday. I, I was on a brand new job site. We just finished clearing and not, not Friday, Monday, Monday, yesterday, we just cleared the job site and we were, he, I was, he, I was checking in on a couple of new things. I'm like, dude, this is like, this is what I, I enjoyed doing. This was the whole brush. cut down brush. You didn't clear it. We did. I, I'm not saying it was this like magical day. I'm just saying I was no, on a job and I was excited. Trees. <laughs> did I say cut down trees? No, I mean, clearing right. is, uh, sorry. We're not, we're leaving the trees, John. We're building the house within. Yeah, the good it luck with that. Then I'll die in two years because you crush the, no, we're bringing, the roots. We're bringing, uh, I don't know what these people are called. People that Arbor. save trees. 
No, isn't yeah. it something else like a horticulture? Is that horticulturalist? Yeah, we use an arborist. They give us basically you have to put a tree fence around the canopy, which you'll never do because it'll cut down too much space. We're doing that in one job um, because the tree's 150 years old or something like that. But, Sorry, I just holy side trip. But yeah, you're right. You went back to do an old school story. But yeah, it was like this. Like I, I wasn't thinking about it. It's like the, you know, I, I fell in this YouTube trap of like, all right, let's let's figure out how to break it. And it's like I don't want to not produce three videos a week because i think that's fun and it, it like keep it keeps the ball rolling but we, i don't want to get down this rabbit hole of trying to fit my projects into a video format that works or it's like but you know what no. for the record i watched that story because it wasn't produced right just for so the they, record like love you to death i don't know why i'm saying i don't know why i'm saying right, i was but. like you know, every time it's produced i'm like that i don't need to know that part of nick yeah but when nick's walking around that's the nick i want to know what's going on it's just tough for I you guess it depends that. on the person. I lose interest once it's forced. And I, I think, I don't know, maybe that's, it's definitely personality where I don't want to do something that somebody tells me or do it away because somebody tells, like, I want to struggle through it. I want to screw it up. I want to figure out why it's not right and then how to fix it. And I want that to be on my terms and not because somebody's saying, you should do it this way. This is the easiest way. Or because like the metrics or the analytics say that this is what needs to be done. If I don't follow those rules and I fail, then so be it. But it, at least I enjoyed that process and it was me and it was organic and it was real throughout that process. As soon as I start trying to manipulate things to hit a certain formula, I'm just done with it. I'm over it. <clears throat> I like the, I like the artistic freedom. I was, I was, I had like the most dad, dadly as an adverb, adjective, dadly. Yeah, dadly. Um, Father's Day, Rachel got me a new grill because we've had a grill since before we were married. Well, so the grill grill's too. probably, yeah, so it's probably like 15 years old and we're putting it together and I'm just, she knew, she knows that I don't like stuff like that. I don't like following directions where I have to build something based on the directions. I don't like baking because you just you follow a list and you go and it doesn't give you any sort of artistic freedom to figure something out to make it better to screw it up um my brain just doesn't work that way so i'm always miserable putting stuff like that together i like to be able to kind of figure things out in a more natural way um kind of the way that my brain thinks i i look at directions and they're dumbed down sometimes so much that they confuse me more than just not following directions. Like I'm putting this grill together and it tells you, and it's, there's no words, it's just pictures. And I'm like, that's even worse for me because I'm looking at the picture and I'm trying to make sense of the picture. I'm completely overthinking it. And it, it shows you to put screws in one side of the leg and then like adjust the leg before you put the other screws in. And so you can like bend it out and get your screws to go in the hole. And it, I'm like, well, no shit. What else are you going to do? Like it, it doesn't make sense to do it any other way. And I'm sitting there for like 30 seconds trying to figure out why the directions say that, what the hell does it mean? And it's so simple that I'm overthinking and I'm like, I don't even know what these directions mean right now. Um, I just, I don't, I don't, for me, that's not fun. Being told how I need to kind of cultivate and shape my content isn't fun. How I need to do my jobs isn't fun. That's not, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to kind of go through the motions and have a paint by numbers. That's not on my own terms. You just described how I build off of drawings. I glance Painting at them by numbers or no. I glance at the drawings and use them as suggestions. Yeah. And it's the same as when I put together Ikea or a grill. I'll be like, all right, let me look at the components. And like, I, I feel like I'm very lucky to be able to look at those things and go, I can guess it pretty much where everything goes yeah. and how I would go about it. And my kids think I'm nuts because it's like, when we put that decked thing together for the back of my truck, yeah. dude, I didn't even look at the directions. I like the sorted out hardware. That's nice. Yeah. Where but they put like bags of hardware and a b c d e f and yeah. it's like i, I have I rachel it. i have rachel handing me all the parts of the hardware 
And then she's like, oh, no, I used all the screws out of bag A without going into bag C. And I was like, yeah, this is pretty much the equivalent of you baking. Or she goes <laughs> to bake, and it, baking's very specific. It's it's a science. It's ratios and proportions. And she goes into it just winging it, where she's like, oh, I only had a third a cup of flour, and I needed a half, but I did it anyway. And then the pancakes come out like soup and she's i don't know what the heck happened like, <laughs> what, 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 bro? It's like the, almost had those are not hour. suggested like those are not suggested you can't alter them at all you know it's a very specific thing that's just how her brain works but she actually prefers that because it doesn't leave room for interpretation for her and she's perfectly fine with somebody giving her directions and say do it this way and that's not how i that's not how i work it's, for it's me, just, that's miserable. It's the same as like when I follow an account and I appreciate what they do and how they do it. And then you watch them then have a post and you know that they're, that they're trying to write something to get – they're soliciting action from someone like, hey, what would you do? You know, what's yeah. your Friday night like? And you, I'm like, dude, fuck off. Like I'm not following <laughs> you for that. Okay? Yeah. If I, I would DM you before I leave a comment and, and it's like – and those are the moments where I hate social media. It's because someone's been corrupted by an algorithm, by the, the the follower count. And it's like, I get that that can consume you. I mean, it's it just, why? At some point, it's the algorithm is going to get either going to get you and you're going to get frustrated. Mm. And the years of whatever you did up leading up to that is gone. I think social media is, if it stays alive, is a great window for like my kids' kids to be able to see who I was. And maybe yeah. there's a chance that I influence them. That's pretty much that's the reason why I do it. And then on the flip side, it's because it gets us business. Yeah. Like right. it, it like this is the reasoning and this is a great reward. Not the the purpose doesn't exceed the 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 reward. It's like, all right, I'm gonna mess around with this. I'm gonna try this. And I would love to do more. Honestly, I wish it was six years ago. I really do. And I could dive into the stories and not give a fuck on who sees it and what job I'm putting more time into and where my guys are and everything's rolling smooth. I would pay a godly amount of money to be back at that moment. But at the same time, I'm like, I, I know where I'm at. I know the challenges I'm 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 facing and they're gonna reap a great benefit in the next six to twelve months. You know? But at the same time, it's like, man, it ain't the same. I'm not doing the same yeah, stories. I've, I've always used social initially when it started. It's not that much different to this day, except for I'm not looking to supplement my workload at all. Um, but it's always been with the sole purpose of anyone who's looking to hire me to question everything and anything that other contractors are bringing to the table for them. Like I want, I want you to second guess what you're doing. And I want you to ask yourself if it's measuring up. And I want your customers to then look at that and say, well, did so-and-so do this? Are they putting this much thought into it? Are they putting this much care into it? Is, you know, is <clears throat> this much time being spent on execution? Is the job site this clean uh, are they managing things this well? And I know that there's a lot of people on social media that think that that's me being arrogant or that I'm saying that I'm better than other people. And it's not. That's me trying to um, basically give any potential customers a point of reference for what they do. And if they're looking at us and they're looking at something else, someone else, I want them to question that someone else's process compared to ours. Uh, and it's, it's not about me thinking that I do anything better thinking, you know, that <clears throat> it's anything other than just, Hey, I want you to question and compare. Is it apples to apples? Are we getting this? Um, and that's what I built my entire platform around. And I know that there's a lot of people, I mean, I've had people ask me, there's plenty of contractors out here who do, really nice work, but then they don't promote themselves that way. They just do it and post it. And that's fine if it were just for me and it would, you know, I was just posting my work for the sake of posting more because I wanted to get it out there. But for me, it's more so, Hey, 
I'm going to send my customers there, potential customers there. Hey, look at what we do. This is what we do. And a lot of times they don't understand. So I'm going to articulate what it is we're doing, why I believe it's different. And ask yourself if so-and-so is also doing that, if it looks like this, because if it doesn't, then that price, the two prices, the three prices that you got aren't necessarily comparable. Um, and that's been, that's the, the, the whole reason of why I kind of approach it the way that I do. And you can love me for it or hate me for it. It's a, it's a business decision. Um, it's not necessarily about me making friends or making people happy or anything else. It's, it's basically paving the road for my future as a business owner and for work coming down the line. I think it's smart that you're cognizant about the arrogance that can be seen because I think yeah. ar arrogance is seen by people that aren't educated and aren't comfortable with what's happening. And confidence right. is what's seen by people that know what's going on. And I, I feel like that you, like I teach my son right now, my oldest, my youngest is, isn't ready for it. He's close. But like when you step onto a soccer field or a, a hockey rink, you have to step on that field with a certain sense, a certain level of confidence and and honestly, swagger, arrogance, however you want to call it, it's just knowing the line. And I feel like for me, when I was younger, I had to have a certain amount of confidence where I have these answers. I, I look them up and I, I deliver them with confidence. And I know that with certain people, that will be received as arrogant. And yep. I need to be cognizant of how that operates in, in my world. Because I never want that to linger too long where it's arrogance where, no, 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 like I'm still the same person. And I, yeah. and I am very, very much cognizant, but when Tyler, when you say it with direct line of communication and you're to the point and you know exactly what's happening because you've done it a million times because it's like breathing, that's not, that's not arrogance. That's yeah. just how you move and how you operate in a methodical way. It's, it, it's also, it comes down to the mental aspect of life and business and even athletics and sports and everything else. And I think that your ability takes you so far. Um, you get to, I mean, even if you're looking at athletics, you get to the best of the best in the world at what they do. Everyone eats right. Everyone has proper diet. They exercise like mad men and women. There's bio from like a biological perspective, there's nothing better than them. Everyone is very close to being equal. And what it comes down to is having the mental strength to push through everyone's tired everyone's hungry you know everyone's exhausted and burnt out and they've been doing this for and it, it comes down to who has the most self-confidence who who believes in themselves the most and that's not any different with what we do i was just on brad's podcast today and he he asked me a question about how do you have the confidence to be able to sell what you're doing to customers or have the conversation or tell them that you're not a good fit and for me, a huge turning point was walking other people's jobs where I go on to these jobs that I, I would look up to and feel as though I never measured up to. And now I walk those jobs or I go look at those builders that were always so well respected and still are. And I go on and while I'm not doing the scale of that work, I look at the execution compared to mine. And that gives me confidence to understand that what I'm doing is truly different than what most people are doing. And I'm able to do that because I stay very small and I control it. I have my work volume is small enough that I can, I have hyper control over that. And I understand that. And that does give me an advantage to be able to execute at the level I do. And I know that it is different because I've, I put myself out there and I've gone and I've seen it in person and I'm being honest when I see what I do and I know what it looks like compared to what most people are putting out. I couldn't execute on the level that I do if I built an entire house because it couldn't just be me. I'd have to depend on subs and everything else to perform. And then that takes more of me out of the equation. So it's more impressive for me to see people who are building on a larger scale and still executing and having an extreme high level attention to detail, because that's something that I know that I can't do. So right. if you asked me, you know, to build a house and to manage a house, 
I would be able to do that, but it would take me getting my feet wet and getting into that process and making mistakes and learning until I had the self-confidence and the business confidence to go into those being like, hey, I could build an entire house and it's going to, I know that the execution is going to be above average up there with the people who are the best at doing this. But right now I wouldn't be able to do that. I would, I couldn't sell a job like that because I don't believe in myself in that in that way because i haven't done it so explain to me the other side of that walkthrough where i've walked through houses and go all right that's crap but then i walk away going but they're making more money than me they're taking home more money and and i can't figure out how to get through it but i think we've always we've always figured we've always talked about the fact that it's it's easier to be mediocre it's easier to be you know, in the middle, you know, and not striving for greatness. Like it's easier. It's the commodity. You know, are, like, are you in it to make money? Or are you in it to produce a quality product? Like what's, agree, agree. but my, I guess my, my catch is the rub is that when you realize, why not under, just do that? No, 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 no. It's, it's, I'm undervaluing my skill. And, you know, there's moments in our careers where we're like, what, why am I doing this? What, what is the, the value? It's if I keep delivering for my clients and giving them a, an amazing experience or let's say great experience and a great product. And I still go home to my mediocre house that I can't fix up. And that takes a toll. That's, that's real life. That's like, I forget what I was saying to my architect last night. I was like, we're talking and I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to get paid off, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, the guy's got more money than God. And I'm like, I'm still turning my AC window unit on every night. Like, I don't, I don't have the, you know, the fancy. I, I guess I'd have my old boss had this issue. He decided to live in the neighborhoods that we built in. And then he would have the multiple cars and a five car garage. But then he would then try and nickel and dime somebody for $500. It's like, but if you want to live that life, if we want to live this million dollar lifestyle that we show it with a big builder on campus on IG, the reality of it is we're not. Some of us are like, I look at Brad and I'm like, dude, that dude goes on vacation like every other week. Like he's got like 17 kids, like new pair of but, sneakers and stuff. I mean, this is how dogs. the conversation started, right? You're <laughs> how, do I, how do I get there? <clears throat> but you're comparing yourself to Brad, which is just that he's in a completely different market. I know. He's I want. Set up I want the cliff notes. I want. I want to know how. But it's not going to work for you. What Agreed, he but... does is not going to work for you. So why it doesn't even? So for me, it's are you happy turning your window unit on every night? If you're not, then what do you have to do so that that's something that's off your plate? Like, does Brad have the ability to go and coach his kids athletics every season? Like, does he have that freedom in his schedule to do True. that? So, so how do we, when we know that we're undervaluing our skill set, how how do we do, how do we do what you just said? How do we turn it around? Do how do we restructure? Because that's one of the hardest things to do is go, hey, I'm already squeezing out fourteen percent on a job. How am I going to get eighteen percent to be able to know I'm going to spend twenty grand on HVAC and this stuff, or do I keep throwing those gimmies in for a client instead of being the bad guy saying, you know? this was missed and I'm going to eat it. It's, it's baby steps, right? So I had to hang up with that for a long time and I didn't charge any extras and it gets to a point where I'm not funding your project. And what you have to do is you have to find a customer where you, you start establishing those, what, where you want to be, right? So if it's extras, I'm going to start charging for, maybe you have a threshold, anything up to a thousand I'll cover. Like, 5,000 over the course of the job will cover when it gets above that. That's when I'm going to start actually having change orders and everything else. And for me, the confidence in that is when I finish a project for a customer, I charge them every extra that was not in the scope of work and they still love the experience. They still love the job. And then they call me back to do more work because then I, I say I'm doing it right. Like they still thought it was fair. I made the money that I need to make. They're happy with me. They're happy with what they paid. They're happy with the entire experience, so much so that they want me to come back and do more work. So for me, the confidence comes in from the customer because if I'm happy and I made a ton of money 
and the customer's unhappy, then that's not a win for me. If the customer's extremely happy, but I ate it on the job and I just worked for six months and made pennies, then I'm not happy. But if I get done a job, I made the money that I need to. I felt like it was a fair rate. They felt like it was a fair rate. They didn't feel like I took advantage of them and they're calling me for more work. Then that's like, hey, I can take that model and I can bring that to the next job. And maybe you start making a little more money. You start not giving away things for free and you get past the point that you don't feel as though you're nickel and diming people, but you're getting compensated fairly. And then it, it's just a slow progression. You, you're not going to be able to go into your next job and say, I'm going to charge them for every single thing without kind of taking baby steps into that. I, I think I go through the thing and go, in five years, I'll have the product that I'm delivering will match the fee structure I need. Then that's what you have to do. If you don't, if you don't feel confident that what you're charging for is worth it to customers and you haven't established that, that, that esteem within your product, then you're not going to feel right doing that. You're not going to feel like you are, and you probably shouldn't charge that. And you know, it took a couple of jobs of me saying like, I know that it's already expensive is I know that we push the budget and then it's like, well, maybe I charge them for this one or two things and they have no issue with it. And I'm like, well, you know, on the next one, I can charge them like, here's my, my scope of work. This is what was over. And the more that you do it, like, and you are following through with your end of the bargain, you're still delivering the product that you believe in and that they believe they paid for. They, they generally don't have an issue with paying for that. The problem is when they start paying for things that they don't find are worth that number. So if you're, if you're, your product isn't where you think it's going to be, and it's not where they think they've paid for and they're paying more, of course, they're going to get upset and then nobody's going to be happy. But if you're knocking it out of the park and you have fair change orders to them and you're making the money that you need to, everyone's going to be happy. I mean, you'll get customers that aren't happy and they're not going to be happy for anyone. But I think that, that that's so much more about experiencing those jobs and those customers still having a great experience with you and finding value in the dollar signs. I think you also have to know who you are. Like Nick, you said you started taking the disc mm. and, and to understand, you know, what your strengths are and what your, your weaknesses are for management and everything else. And, you know, what you what you find yourself focusing on instinctively, not just kind of what you want to focus on. And I think that's key, Tyler, to what you're saying is like, like going back to when someone says to me, you know, more, more product and less face, I could have taken that differently. And it's the same as when I go to a project, I've always been this mentality and it took me forever to realize it through my entire career is that I'm going to be the hard worker no matter what. And if someone gives me poor feedback, guess what? I'm going to work harder. Like there's guys, Kirk that used to work for me. He, you know, he'd get criticism or however you want to call it, a little bit of feedback and he'd go into a shell and be an introvert for three days. You know, there's other guys like Benny. I remember when Benny got, got lit up, he goes, guess what? I'm going to work seven to three. You pay me for eight hours. You want to you want to talk to me like that? You get me for eight hours. I'll never forget that. And he did it for like a full week and it was awesome. And I, I love him for it and still love him for it. And there's different people. I am not that person. I am the guy that if I get great feedback and they give me a bonus, guess what? I'm now filled up to the tank. I'm, I'm going 1,000 miles an hour. Guess what? If I get poor feedback, I'm filled up. And I'm going 1,000 yep. miles an hour. And I, I think it's knowing who you are. For the longest time, I think I let owners of companies I worked for take advantage of that. They would see it and go, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hammer this kid. And now I have to be cognizant that I have clients that will give me you know, feedback and, and I'll go, I'll go a step further to make it better yeah. because I'm getting shitty feedback. And well, even the good stuff is is getting the same thing. It's just that's not the life I want to be. I want to be in control of that, not being controlled by it. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. Here's one of the drivers for me that I think is in the back of my head on every job. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. I think about what I charged for it, right? 
and mm-hmm. I'm not going to feel comfortable charging somebody a premium if I'm not delivering a premium product. So a lot of times I'm redoing stuff on my own dime because this is what I charge them for. Right. I'll, I'm not the type and like I can ask you, are you guys the type where you charged a thousand dollars for something and you know that you delivered a $700 product? Are you just walking away with that extra 300 in your pocket? Like, Hey, I made 300 bucks on that. Or are you going back saying like, this didn't hit the mark. I need to make this the thousand dollar product that I sold them because I'm the person that I'm always going to make it the thousand dollar product or the $1,200 product for the thousand dollar price point. I'm never going to walk away from a project and say, I charged them a premium and I delivered a subpar project uh, product and I walked away with extra money in my pocket. That's just not me. And unfortunately, I think that there's a huge shining light on those guys that do that. And John, you kind of referenced it. It's like the guy that's doing a mediocre product and making more money. It's because they're they're charging a premium that is, you know, from a from a market rate standpoint, comparable to a product that you would put out, but they're delivering a lesser product and taking a larger markup on it. But that's what they're focused on as well. They're not focused on getting to that premium product. They're focused right. on making they're, as much right. how as they mu- can. How little do I have to do for the maximum return? Correct. And, 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 you know, unfortunately, and John, like, that's what you're talking about. It's like you're uncovering the fact or not uncovering, but like. You're talking about the fact that you're not valuing what you are doing enough to then come in and, and charge a, a premium a, a based on that, where it's like, I'm, I'm producing a premium product. I'm going to charge even more than the guy next to me. And yes, market might say it's the same 5,000 square foot, four bed, three bath, but it's not. And it, it, it's, it's just like the whole custom you know, slogan and, and, and all this stuff. It's tell you brought up a great point of like leaving 300 bucks on the table. I feel like every time I'm doing everything, whether it's a soft that I posted the other day, it's like, no, no, I'm, if it's a thousand dollar budget, I'm squeezing $1,200 a product out. Right. Or, or $1,200 of a detail out. I'm trying to get the best out of that craftsman or that carpenter or that plumber or that tile setter that day. I'm trying to like, like we want to do these classes at IBS and, and all that. And it's like, we talk about mindset and it, we also, in my, I have this whole sheet on, you know, it's, it's how you enter it. Like, what do you, like when you call a guy that night and go, Hey, you coming tomorrow? I open the door for him. Like we talked about social media. I just open the door for him to go. No, instead of going, like I sent, I tell my guys, send a photo of everything that laid out and go see you tomorrow at seven. Guess what? I didn't open that door. Same difference. Right. Now the guy gets there. The mind I am now instilling mindset on my job site where it's like, yo, you ready for today? Big fucking shit and eating ass grin on my face going, what? You ready? <laughs> You're doing some crazy shit today. You know, he's been on a ladder doing a soffit, but he's doing a soffit detail that I freaking love that we yeah. drew out on, on the zip tape that that day where on the last seven houses, it's just been, all right, I'm going to get through today. I'm going to go hit, hit a bush light when I get home, maybe 12 of them, and then go back to hitting the soffit again tomorrow. But no, <laughs> not on this job. I'm going to make sure that that, that you know, herringbone detail and how it, it, it carries up the, the rake, dude's dialed in. This is the best day of his life. I'm, I'm exaggerating now, but it's like that's what I'm trying to instill in, in that. So, Tyler, to your point about that $1,000. I'm trying to make that guy's day his best day too. Not just the product, but the energy on that job because I think it carries on to the plumber, to the laborer, to whoever's there that if if we do that, then no matter what detail it is and what value of what thing it is on the job site, because you know you have a thousand line items on a budget or more, I'm always trying to squeeze the best out of it. And that is the challenge I accept beyond building the product. You get me? That is the challenge every day, not building. Like so many guys go in this going, well, I got to hit the schedule. I got to do this. And, you know, I think we joked the other day that there was an ad out that someone put out and it's like, yeah, it's this design company. They're like, yeah, we design it. Uh, schedule and budget are, two, schedule and budget are big things. And I'm like, and I turn to my wife and I go, I wouldn't put either one of those up. That Like <laughs> I'm not setting the bar with those two fucking things. Yeah. 
like I'm just setting myself up for failure. Exactly. Like I want it to be like energy and like Benny and I have been trying to figure out how do we put relationships in a clean way on the website? Like, cause it's like everything we do is it starts, finishes and everything in between is about that relationship. I, I just had the conversation with Brad today and it, it's so much like, I think that you're going to be able to charge your rate when, when you have those customers that are hiring you specifically for you and for what you do. And they fully comprehend who you are and what you, what you do. Um, because they're not going to hire you because you're going to turn the job around the fastest. They're not going to hire you, um, because you know, you're on top of all of your pit. Like I'm, I want them to come to me for my strong suits and understand where I'm not as strong, where it's like, I'm not going to be the quickest one. I'm not going to turn around the job the fastest. Um, sometimes maybe my communication isn't the best, but there are reasons why you would hire us and there are these things. And if that's why you're coming to us and you want them, then you're going to be okay with waiting a little bit longer. Um, and you're going to be okay with, Hey, you know what? I know that he's got a lot going on. I might not get an email back every day. And, but if I go and I sell a job or somebody hires me based on our execution and the expectation that I'm going to be able to be on the phone with them or send them an email every single day regarding their project. And I'm setting myself up for failure. Uh, I'm, they're going to be disappointed from day one. I don't want that customer, no matter how cool that job is, I'm setting a false expectation that's going to be a, like an aggravation for them from day one that in turn is going to ruin that job. So that's the type it's of job gonna, where it's like, I don't care how cool it is. I'm not going to sell you on that because I know that I can't hit your expectation there. Do you think it's going to undermine your confidence in the job at the same time that, you know, you, you're walking in there going, all right, my bread and butter is like energy and the details and all that. But I need to now, I need to be the one focused on schedule. And you're like, that this isn't me. Like, like there's yeah. certain moments right now where I'm like, with what we're doing and I'm like, like we finally having the office is great and being able to dial in all the bookkeeping and all that. It's like, it's the best thing ever. Cause now I'm like this stuff that I've been delegating to someone else. No, I can take the extra 45 minutes a day and take three hours off their plate. But by me doing it any other way, it's almost like this, you know, you ever get that like sinking pit in your stomach and like, you're always like, Oh, it's like, that's what I feel like when you're trying to do that, when you're trying to deliver something that you're not, isn't your strong suit, isn't what you should be doing. And it's something you sold the project on. It, it's like almost underbidding a job because that's what they wanted to hear. Yeah. And knowing it's going to cost more, knowing that you're going to get to that point where shit's going to hit the fan. Right. And it's like at, every day builds up. They don't know it, but you know it. And you go, oh man, it's going to be today. But and, it, it, and you can't run away from it. It would completely decimate your confidence if your day-to-day -day interactions were not um, based on your strong suits. Because I think, yeah, because I think that your confidence is because you're successful or because a problem arises and you conquer that problem. You conquer it efficiency, efficiently and you're not missing a, skipping a beat and then your customers are happy. If you show up every day, like if I sell a job and I say, listen, I'm not going to get to you quickly, but when I'm on your job, I'll be on your job and you'll be very happy with the execution, the way that we keep your house, the way that we treat your family, who's in and out of your house. I'll be able to do that. Whether I'm six months late to start that project because of whatever happened leading up to that, once I'm on their project, what I sold them on, I will nail that 110% to the best of my ability and then some. If I sell that customer, I'm going to get to you at six months. And then from six months until when I start that job at nine months, every day in the back of my head, I'm saying I should have been on that job. I should have been on that job. That's just going to eat me up. And I'm not going to feel confident in what I'm doing. I'm not going to feel confident in my relationship with that customer. Everything that I tell them at that point, I'm going to say, are they second guessing me that I'm lying, that I'm not being honest? that are they going to start second guessing my work? Hey, he sold us on his work being really good. And he sold us on starting in six months and it's now nine months. Is his work really that good? 
Um, so I think that it's going to affect everything and that you, you do need to really focus on those strong suits and sell them and not sell somebody something that you can't do. And, and you have, and if you don't know what that is, if you're listening to this and you go, I don't know what it is. Now, today's the first day of you tracking that is the first day of you writing down like my wife right now, she's starting her own company and she's got this job. She goes, I already underbid it. And I'm like, it, it's really funny to hear her like approach to it. She's like, I know. I gave them a price and then it blew up into like four rooms instead of one. So the price I gave them was for one room to do like decor and all that. And I'm like, the only way you come out of this without having resentment is that if you track it, because the yep. data that you come up with right now will be more valuable than you going back to them going, Hey, I should have charged this. Cause that is the thing that everyone misses at that moment. Yeah. So like, if you're listening to this going off, oh, well, I don't know if my strength is, is this because no one takes the disc. And no one knows what their strengths are and it doesn't help them see them for, I mean, you, they're there mm -hmm. so often And people, if you're an employee, you get evaluated by how much, how successful your project is, but that's not playing to your strengths. No one's telling you, Hey, this is phenomenal. This needs work. You're, right. you, you're awful at this. You're at like a 20 scale instead of a hundred. Just, just for the reference, like you've brought it up, the disc survey John's talking about D I S C it's drive influence. Um, I knew Something it. with an S what is it? Drive influence support and clarity. And, um, it's a survey. You can, you can Google it and take it. You can get like pay like 14 bucks and you get an in-depth, uh, response, but it, and John, you, you've taken it, right? I think it a bunch of times. Yeah, it, it's not something that it's it's not something that, and at least in my opinion, and I've, a, a lot of us here have actually taken it, and I've and I've taken it in, into consideration when we're, you know, putting people in what positions they're going to be doing or what they're going to be doing in the company or how they can, you know, how they can grow or where where they need the most support. It's not something that's like super uncovering in the sense of like, oh, I never knew that about myself. It's everything you know about yourself and what it means and how it relates to the things that that challenge you and the things that you struggle with and the things that you are really good at and how that plays off. Like mine is, you know, a lot of my my team is clarity and the, I'm not I'm not a clarity guy. I'm an influence guy. So I'm not the guy that's like, you know, in the weeds or like super detailed in a spreadsheet or super detailed when it's, when it comes to putting something together, I'm more like big picture, high energy moving really fast. And but, it talks about how that relates to clarity and how I annoy people who, uh, rank high in clarity because I'm, I'm moving too fast to, to do something at its fullest. But also when it comes to self-esteem and confidence in your business and what you do, if you understand and you advocate or articulate to your customers that your strong suit is not going to be clarity and you have a plan in place for that, right? when they, at the end of the job and you say, Hey, how did everything go? The work was on point. You know, you could use some work on clarity. That's not going to be a hit to your self-esteem. You'd be like, already knew that going in, right. you know, like if you, kind of concede to that. And that's not that you can't work on that and you can't try and put systems in place to better that. But if you go in and your customers know that that's going to be a weak point for you, but you'll make up for it on this end, and then that's their gripe at the end of the job, that's not going to, that's not going to, you know, burnish your self-esteem at that point. You're going to be like, okay, I knew that going in. Maybe I can change some things. But if you go into that and you don't tell them and then they rip on you because you really lacked in that clarity department, you're going to be like, shit, I really need to like pick this up. They were disappointed in that. Um, and I, I think that so much that helps you coming out and being open and honest with your customers about what they're going to get from you and what they can expect from you is if you can then fulfill those expectations and you are honest with your expectations that shouldn't be that hard to do you're going to set yourself up for success yeah it, it's it's such a huge thing it's like nowadays i set my clients up and go hey no matter what i do i'm going to lean towards value so if it takes longer just assume i'm leaning towards value yeah like just just so we're clear and if and if we have to have this discussion i'm going to say hey 
I'm going to keep this crew because I, I value what they have and the quality, but it's going to cost a little bit more if we want to have it done faster and get two crews in here. What do you want to do? You know where I stand. I'm going to say, mm-hmm. keep this crew. If it adds three weeks, it's worth it. That's just how I am and how I was done because I've done it the other way. I'm, I've done it where we've put in a million people and and then we're trampling on different details and and too many guys are overlapping. So there's these these seams that are visible to me that I don't think are visible to all people. And it's I, I think it's like I, I joke about one client that I I met with and you know going through the budget and they get to the the um, percentage at the end. Like, can we can we work on this percentage? Can we get it down a little bit? And I was like, yeah. It took me. 30, you know, 25 years in the business to come up with a solid answer that came off my tongue without hesitating. I was like, yeah, if you want to drop how this prior, how this product's a priority in our business, yeah, I'll drop it to 10%. We'll show up 10% less than we would to <laughs> anyone else. Is that what you want to do? And he looked at me straight face and he's like, no, I'm like, because I have clients that will pay what they think is a good value that we're giving. And if you don't see that, then I'll right. show up to their products every day on time and your product will be that favor because well, if that's you don't what you're see that. Me. Why are you hiring me? Yeah. But you it's, know? but I also think it's, it's going back to that thing of like three quotes. It's, it's the same. It's just what it's been instilled in this industry forever that we expect to break it over. It's like when we said we'll bring back trades to high schools and we're like, you know what? <laughs> that ship is fucking left. Yeah. And it's like, all right, so the reality is, you know what? I'm not going to break that, but I need to have the right answer at the right time. It's like when someone says, hey, you know, what is that fee? What is that percentage I'm paying for? And it's like, dude, I wish I could lower that. You know how how, how expensive it is to do business in Massachusetts? And look them straight in the eye when you say that. Insurance, workers' right. comp. All these things. If you can make it cheaper to do business in town, I will absolutely lower my fee. But until then, I can't do anything about it. uh, Again, I try and pin things like we joked about early, early on. Even if you don't have a bookkeeper, dude, Susan's up my back to get that that quote proposal. Like whatever. They don't need to know. Like create the email that says Susan at, at whatever, Vintage Builders. You know, it's like make it Put it on someone else. Like I blame the spreadsheet for everything. Like we had a meeting on Friday where the client wanted to get the numbers done. We're talking about this and they're like, yeah, we want to get it under two. And and she goes, every time we talk about something, I'm going to tap the the notepad. That's going to be like the budget. We're going we're gonna to acknowledge the budgets in play. You know, what What about this? And then she'd be like, I want to do this. And I'm like, can you tap the, the, the page? Because <laughs> that's a budget question. And I'm like, you, you, we're talking about all this stuff and it's great, but... We're not acknowledging that part of the elephant in the room. And it, it's, that's the biggest thing is knowing it. And I've gone through a lot of my career ble- being colorblind to it, not knowing what my my asset was my drive. That's, that, that's part of it. You know, and it's, I think that's my biggest thing, Tyler. We're talking about this whole comparison thing and everything else is that when I remember I was talking to a kid who needed guidance and needed some help. And he's on the phone with me and he's like, yeah, I got my first house. And I'm at like 425 a square foot. Dude, if I didn't put my phone on mute and go, what the fuck? Your first house? Like first house. Like I struggle in some houses to get that. Yeah, like why are we on the phone right? Why are you on the phone right now? Yeah. Like like, you should be building. Yeah, I'm like, um, I don't, and it, and it, it's so, I have to then take that, you know, put it in a door put it in a room and close it up and be like, all right, so if you're not acknowledging that that's a home run, then what are we missing? There's yeah. something else that you're completely oblivious to that is like I tell my guy, John and those guys, we're walking through houses. I'm like, I'm not trying to be a dick right now. I'm trying to find where the weak link is. I want to find out who's going to be the person that screws this whole thing up. Yeah. And, and until I find it or we exhaust all of it, then I'm not going to be happy. I'm sorry. I'm not celebrating, you know, every little moment. I was going to say that your one of your assets should be your um, devish, devilishly good looks, not just know. your drive. Yeah, it's probably. I you want you want to know why my fee is so high? Have you seen you what I look like? Your card. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I went to men's league hockey on Thursday night, and one of the dads is there, and he goes, "Dude, you shaved you shaved your head." I was like, yeah, man, I had to get rid of the 
the hair and he's like dude i was so pissed at you when you had all that lettuce they call it the lettuce hanging off the back he was on the ball for like 10 years and when i saw you i love that every time he sees me he's like fuck you he said, every every thursday when i show up he hates me because i shaved it yeah, it grows back it's like the lawn not for him though no <laughs> like, i guess that's true <laughs> not for him all right well, i think uh nick you said you get some kids to get to i gotta pick them up today yeah uh-oh daddy duty with my mom yeah i think um social media definitely has its its pros and its cons i i do i do believe that you can you can use a realistic um person benchmark company to kind of elevate yourself or to strive for or to kind of always be running towards but to use people to compare yourself to um that you know is just going to be detrimental to your well-being or your self-esteem or your confidence you you can't do that um you just have to like i said before identify what's important to you what your strong suits are what you can bring to the table why you are in the position you are and not necessarily compare yourself to everything else that's out there because at the end of the day it's it's your life it's your business it's your family it's your own unique set of circumstances that have led you here and all you can really do is change things within your control to right that ship or at least get it sailing the direction that you want yeah i think it's important to you know to to focus on using it for influence for the right reasons yep you know it's not you know, just like you said it's it should be influential in your growth and and what you you're you're focused on achieving but don't that, don't forget to difficult. yeah don't forget to reflect on how far you have come and what you've done and that i think that that was my biggest thing is i was so focused on what i haven't achieved yet and you know and for me i kept ignoring the fact that you know well just a year ago just two years ago four years ago this is what you were doing and it's like there there is this forward momentum um and you know ultimately that's why we started this podcast to remind everyone and including ourselves you know that we're, we're all we're all striving for something whether it's big or small you know we all we all have goals and and we struggle with them for sure use it to your advantage don't use it to beat yourself up yeah I actually i actually wanted to read it because there's a an account i follow and i sent it to mike that day um good it's gfda.co uh good fucking design advice uh and the one i sent to him it, it's just it's you know it's um they just have quotes every day and tyler i send some to you and then you tell me that don't try tell me not to justify my craziness with them but yeah this one it was don't be so hard you on yourself and what are you gonna say you send one like every other day to the group. Well, text. they're good. I read them yeah. and I'm and like, Nick's man, like, I feel okay, so I can be, I can be insane because I just read this like random <laughs> internet quote I, that told me it's okay it's like, to be crazy. I it's definitely like, do whatever it's a gets screen you by. On his phone now, it's I like, definitely it's like yeah. Gets you by. yeah. I definitely read some of them. Like, yeah, I'm not. See, I'm not crazy. Someone else thinks the same thing. Yeah. Uh, but it, it says, how far have you carried it? How long has it weighed you down? How much slower? Ha- are you because of it how many times have you wanted to let it go how many times have you just kept holding it up how many people even see that it's there how many how much consideration have you actually given it yourself how willing are you to acknowledge that you're doing something difficult how fucking strong are you uh sorry strong you are simply because you managed to bear it bear it and how about giving yourself a little bit more credit and where do you want to get that tattooed back <laughs> <laughs> i think i'm gonna go upper thigh it's long but i just i i read that and i sent it to him he goes hey i'm not on the bridge i'm like no i know it's just like <laughs> I, I feel like you know sometimes like that's what i i read that i'm like yeah it's right like i gotta remember like you know i don't be so hard on yourself this isn't you know this isn't the end of the world so i i think mike could be the most underrated social media guy out there right now like i i love talking with him since comparing him to who just kidding (laughs) Ah, i just think it's he he builds amazing stuff i've said to him a hundred times each week i'm like if your kids were old enough 
you need to move. He was in Utah last week. He texted me. He goes, look at this stuff. Look at this shit. And what he builds is amazing. I'm like, you would crush. I've been saying it for like six months. You would crush in any other market besides Chicago. It's just the, it's right. it's the grass is always greener. Like what you what you see and what you're doing doesn't look like what everyone else is doing. You just you see it. It's your day to day. It's it's your life, and it always seems more appealing to be elsewhere, or look elsewhere. That everyone else has other other things going on. Um, and no, but hold I on, mean, hold like on. I think I've said this to my wife, and I think we've all said it individually. Is that Tyler? If you were in a different market. You, you would you would be less frustrated in general. It, I, I think th- your work and your execution would be so much more appreciated. In a di- just, a, I'm not knocking your area. No, I'm just saying, I, I agree. In a different market, you would soar. I soar. agree. I but I also think that my life wouldn't be dramatically different because no. you know there's certain aspects that would be easier and less frustration. But I would still, you know, my head would still be wherever I go. I would still be wherever I go. Um, and, you know, it, it's the whole comparison thing. When you're looking at other people, it's it's kind of through those rose-colored gl- glasses where you don't see everything else that's going on. And it just, it seems like it's so much better, but it's the same crap. You know, like you're dealing with the same crap and there's the same issues and you still don't have enough time and you don't have enough money and you're never going to be able to retire. And, you know, you look at what everyone else is doing and you you don't see what's inside of their head. And I think that oftentimes the grass does look greener um, and you just have to remember you kind of have to appreciate what you have um, more so than looking at what other people have and wondering why you aren't there. All right, guys, it's been real. All right, guys. Well, you can you know where to find us. Uh, you can hit us up on Instagram, the Perry Modern Craftsman. You can also hit us up on the Survey Monkey. Let us know how we're doing. I've been slacking. Do- I haven't been looking. That's all right. We uh we we've been getting some reviews. We had a couple three stars last week. One I couldn't had a hard time reading. So <laughs> apologize about that. Because it wasn't about me. Uh, it wasn't about you. John. <laughs> it's hard to relax. Read. <laughs> relax. It wasn't about you. Um, it was a female, it was something, uh, female technology and shop, but had a hard time understanding where they were going with it. It sounded like it was just a, a specific topic around Justin Fink that they gave three stars about. Uh, so poor Fink. Uh, but I got a four star one here. So let's read this one. Episode 166 on bidding jobs. We need to start selecting bidders the way it got. I just realized if I keep reading the, 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 the three stars and the four stars, people are going to. Leave us. Well, yeah. You know what? Yeah. I'm not reading that one. Yeah. Sorry, guys. They should, they should have left us. Motiva- a, uh... Motivating and insightful. Five stars. Love the pod as always. Insightful and informative. But Tyler's voice is, uh, I don't even know what that word is. Aberrant. Let's Ab- look it up. Abhorrent. Keep Sexy. killing it, though, Tyler. What Sexy. is abhorrent? I've never, I've, I don't think I've ever seen that word. I'm becoming okay. so much. Inspiring ah. disgust and loathing, repugnant. No way. Oh, really? Ouch. Ouch. Are you serious? Ouch. Guy, 2011, 58. You're mean. Who is wow. it? Guy Fieri? Uh, maybe. All right. I'm not the <laughs> only one. I love the podcast. You guys really help put things into perspective for your fellow builders. When I'm having a tough day at work, I th- I'm thinking I'm the only one dealing with these issues. It's comforting to listen to you guys, knowing that others are dealing with the same issues. Keep up the great work, and thanks for taking the time on your schedules to produce content. I love how the Chuck and Truck operation likes to talk about 200k management fees and the idiots who pour his concrete. I read that one. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> it... That's all. Oh I boy, it. Utah economy would like to hear more about where I work. I recommend Husky Homes. Ooh, they're a little great. thicker than the normal homes. <laughs> they build massive houses. <laughs> And then we get solid, great content, Chasing Perfection from Wood Theory. All right, guys. Well, if we are doing a great job, please let us know on iTunes with a five-star review. Keep us in the number one spot for construction podcasts. We're at 918 reviews. We should be able to hit 1,000. We should. We will. I can't believe I'm getting trolled by Guy Fieri but for, about my voice. Yeah. Damn. That's, that's gross. Seriously. We'll see you guys next week. As always, this podcast is brought to you by Duration Molding and Millwork. Want to speed up the completion and 
improve your curb appeal and have one less thing to worry about on your next build? Well, consider the poly ash moldings millwork and siding offered by Duration. With virtually any molding or siding profile available in a timely fashion, the folks at Duration are real problem solvers. And their beveled siding stocked in six different profiles with either a smooth or wood grain face are a real game changer. To learn more about the Duration Poly Ash products, please visit their website at durationmillwork.com. Do you guys like smooth or wood grain better? Smooth. It depends. Uh, I'm I think a smooth I like smooth. Guy. Don't fake I'm it. Smooth. Don't, don't fake it. Yeah, don't yeah. fake it. <laughs>